Well, say it ain't so. Jamal Charlo has again been arrested. The bad news. Jamal Charlo has been arrested. Now, make sure you... I keep telling you guys, I'm the best in the business, and it's not even close. Over 58,000. Follow me for up-to-date boxing news. Boxing Ego 1. So I've already posted it there earlier. And you guys see, I made this graphic for you. Jailed. Oh, no. Oh, no. Look at who they let in the front door. Boxing champion, Jamal. Big Charlo. Charlo was arrested for DUI and fleeing. The caption reads, boxing star Jamal Charlo reportedly arrested in Texas for DUI, a collision and fleeing 12. Charlo should probably spend more time away from boxing via bustednewspaper.com. Now, I already know what the fans are probably saying. Let's look through some of the comments on my official Instagram. Dang, uh, prayer emojis, heartbreaking. This man's career is over and he had a promising future shaking my head. You know, pray, wow, dang, end of a dynasty, shaking my head emoji. Hopefully he can come back to his old self. They need to strip him of the belt, which we'll talk about. Stay tuned to the end of this video. Well, he got one fight left and that's to pay his lawyers and retire. Oh, ish. They need some professional help. Not boxing is looking bad for them. Spiraling downward spiral, shaking my head. Son rather get locked up than have to face Bud Crawford. Very stupid comment since the one that has beef is not. See, this is the thing with boxing. I do these videos and it be dudes like that. It will be like, oh, ego, you don't know what you're talking about. And you guys still cannot tell the difference between Jamel and Jamal Charlo. And it's funny because these the main vocal dudes that be like, oh, ego, you don't know, you're wrong. And again, you can't tell the difference between one Charlo and his twin, right? You guys constantly, some of you, confuse the two to this day. I have no problem distinguishing the two. I'm the best in the business and it's not even close and also the most efficient. Somebody says, pray anything to avoid Caleb Plant. Now that makes more sense because there's some beef there and Caleb Plant slapped him. Dang, I want to see him turn things around, man. It's coming, getting back in the ring. Somebody's laughing. See, I don't laugh. I think that's corny too. I don't laugh at people's misfortune and, you know, getting arrested. This man looks like he needs some type of intervention and he's going through whatever he's going through. So there's some sick people in this world who they take pride in stuff. I'm reporting it. Yes, of course because I'm a boxing reporter and a content creator. So this is my job to inform you, but I don't rejoice in this. Now, enough of that. I posted this earlier, box boxing news, it's bad. This looks bad for Charlo. I have now also confirmed this information. You guys see it on the screen. Charlo is a warrant, all these warrant numbers, driving while intoxicated his bac aka blood alcohol concentration was 0.15 now he does live in texas this offense or offenses occurred in texas but i live in california each state has their own rules since i do not live in texas i don't know what their limitations or regulations are however in California, the level of alcohol that you can have in your system, and they teach you this on the driving test, in California is 0 0.08 BAC. So in California, if he was behind the wheel and got arrested, then his blood alcohol concentration is nearly double eight times two 16 eight plus eight 16 so he's almost double the california limit boom a simple google search in texas the legal blood alcohol concentration which we just went over for drivers 21 and older is 0 0.08 and if you're driving commercially which doesn't need not apply here so basically texas is the exact same as california and I didn't know for a fact, because again, I don't live in Texas. And I didn't know because Texas has a couple different, like Texas was a dry state 
where you couldn't actually buy and purchase alcohol on certain days and stuff. So there are some differences there between big differences between the big states, California and Texas. So now I've just confirmed it 0.08, which is the same as Cali. So now I'm qualified to speak on. So he's almost double the amount. That's the point I'm getting at. And this has now been confirmed by Boxing Ego, who does his research. I give you guys audio quality, visual quality, accurate information. I got to be the best in the business and it's not even close. Terrible news, terrible, terrible news for the sport of boxing. Like, again, some people laugh at stuff like this. It's not funny to me. And you don't see me rejoice off other people's misfortune or boxing looking stupid. It's just not something that I typically do. Ryan Garcia beating Devin Haney, everyone talking about the upset, and then he fails a drug test. Like, that's nothing cool about that. There's nothing funny about that. We'll wait and see what happens with Ryan Garcia. That is not Jamal Charlo. You know, Jamal Charlo's life looking like it's in a downward spiral. You know, this stuff is, is not funny. You know, these are fighters, they're humans. Boxing as it as it sits is already like probably one of the toughest jobs, getting punched in the face for paychecks and to make your money. And now this man who has a lot of talent keeps going through this. This is not his first run in with the law for him or his brother, but I'm not gonna bring his brother into it because the news is about him. But he's recently been arrested for other things and you know waitresses claiming this and he took the money now fleeing the police having almost double the bac it's just one legal problem it looks like some real jermaine taylor type of behavior now what makes it worse for charlo is he's been very inactive he's been very inactive for the longest time and he finally broke that dry spell and fought a guy who came from much lighter weights, like 140, and he didn't stop him. And that was Jose Benavidez. You know, ironically, I don't actually think Jamal Charlo looked terrible, all things considered, in that fight. I thought he looked pretty sharp in that fight. You know, some people were like, oh, he should have got the stoppage. But me, your boy Ego, I can control my emotions and I'm realistic. For someone to be out the ring three years, that's probably as good as it's going to get. You know, you got things, your timing, your reflexes, you're taking a punch you know all these things haven't been tested because you haven't been active so all things considered i thought jamal charlo looked pretty good you know i'm not you're not going to stop everyone just because crawford stopped him crawford ain't doing all this extra stuff when he fought jose benavidez and he wasn't a guy who was undisciplined or to this day is not undisciplined so crawford getting the stoppage good for him i thought jamal charlo looked pretty good in the fight but you know it's hard to think top level and it's hard to imagine jamal charlo with he has a lot of potential he has a lot of talent and stuff like that but at this top level if you're getting in trouble and family issues and inactivity basically the more stuff is piling up against you that's hard to beat top level guys especially when they don't have all these things working against them, right? Like if, if their relationships are intact, their family life is intact, they're not being sued, they're not having to pay out lawyers and they're not getting arrested and then they can't drive certain places because they're getting DUIs and stuff. So this all spells trouble for Jamal Charlo. And it's sad that these top pro athletes and oftentimes boxers keep going through this stuff where they get all this money and then it, it looks like to a degree it's almost being squandered with the money and then you're, you're getting arrested and people want to see him fight Caleb Plant. Now, quickly on Canelo Alvarez, Ego was right yet again. Now you see why I don't want to see in 2024 Canelo versus a fight like Jamal Charlo, which they're talking about could be a September fight. Why do I want to see it in Jamal Charlo outside life which does influence your inside the ring life, it looks like it's spiraling out of control. And you guys are like, oh, you're hating. You want to see, you should want to see the, the Canelo fight. If Canelo fights this man and his, his life looks like out of control, that's weak. You just fought Jaime Mugia, who just got to 168. So now if you spin the block and fight Jamal in September 
and he's done interviews talking about retiring. He's talked about personal demons and problems. He's getting DUIs and whatever else is going on. You know, his girl is fighting his brother, his twin brother's girl. All this stuff is public. He got slapped by Caleb Plant. Um, the list goes on and on, right? Jamal Charlo cried on, on a podcast, the Pivot podcast. He got a lot of stuff going on. Then you couple it with the fact of inactivity and other things. Why would I want to see the Canelo Alvarez fight? Please give me one good reason. Especially when Canelo Alvarez just beat Mungia, who, you know, people booed him after the fight when he was asked about David Benavidez and really didn't give a straight answer. And David Benavidez, we all know, is the fight that everyone wants to see. Jamal Charlo, in addition to all these problems, Jamal Charlo is not really active, despite the one fight with Benavidez. He's going through all these personal problems. But even besides that, Canelo has experienced much more experience at 168 and also even 175, whereas Jamal Charlo's last division, for real, for real, was 160 pounds. So he's not of the division. He's in trouble with the law constantly he's inactive and he's already talked about all these things and how he felt and you're telling me you want to see canelo versus him and Mu and mungia rather than canelo versus david benavidez if you're condoning that then you're just a cinnabon and you're a canelo man fan and you just want to see canelo pick up a win that he's heavily favored in that's what that means to me because there's no one in their right mind that should want to see. We already watched Canelo fight his twin brother in Jamel Charlo. I get it. He was at 54, so he had to move up in more weight. But a casual fan won't be able to distinguish between the two twins. There's people leaving me comments, and they don't even know the difference between Jamel and Jamal Charlo. So the optics of it also look bad because it'll look like Canelo's fighting the same guy that he just fought last year, right? And then David Benavidez keep calling out Canelo, screaming his name. You know it's the biggest fight in boxing, and people would love to have it. And the Canelo man fans are advocate, advocating for Canelo versus Jamal Charlo, who has all this stuff going on. Even Jamal Charlo's weight and shape, he didn't look like career best. Like, you look at these older fights, like when he's fighting Dennis Hogan, he looked like he was in great shape. But then this is like probably the Dennis Hogan fight. I believe he wore that outfit off the top of my head. So to me, there's literally no point to see Jamal Charlo versus Canelo in September. Again, you look at it and Charlo doesn't even look like the same shape that he was in. Plus all these problems that I've said throughout this video. We'll see how this all plays out. But more, more money, more problems, more problems for jamal charlo which is bad because i believe he said in a recent instagram live with ocho cinco he said that he was getting the canelo fight in september now this is going to be a really hard fight even for pbc to try to sell because his outside life sometimes as a pro athlete no matter how talented you are your outside life can overtake your inside the ring life and this may be one of those situations i hope that Jamal Charlo gets his situation his act together but this seems to be a recurring problem let me know what you guys think I bring you the news I've been covering boxing over 10 years this is the boxing news you can trust